I think I really need to uh, tidy up my desk. At least my uh, Wi-Fi count is working. Hi everyone, Mick Make Mail number 41, and I not only have one surprise from JLCPCB, but two. Excellent. Oh, I've also got this. Let's get into it. So you probably know by now that a lot of my videos are being sponsored by JLC PCB. They make all my PCBs and I haven't had any issues with them at all. With 0.4 to 2 millimeters thickness, track widths down to 3.5 mil, and support a whole range of things like BGAs, fingers, cutouts, and they can do all this within 24 hours. They're currently offering 10 PCBs for only two bucks, and if you are a first time customer, you'll get $20 off shipping off your first order. So click on the link in the description below to see what they can do for you. So I think I'll open this one up first. So unfortunately I've got my old opener. I'm going to have to make do with it for a while. Oh, excellent. Okay, apart from a bit of a mess. So one of my patrons actually said that I didn't really have a decent enough uh, letter opener. So he thought he'd uh, buy me a couple and uh, send them to me. Thanks very much, Henrik. Uh, that's absolutely fantastic. These are, these are really nice knives. Hopefully I won't cut myself. Oh yeah, these are fantastic. Oh yeah, I love it. I love it already. So these are really great uh, electrician's knives and uh, they're really classed as wire strippers and the reason is this, you can uh, just grab your cable that you want to strip and run around it and uh, theoretically if you've applied enough pressure you can actually uh, cut it. It makes it just so much easier and uh, I haven't used one of these for many years uh, but if you're using one of these every day you tend to get pretty uh, quick at it. One of the uh, things you've got to be really careful of um, if you apply too much pressure you actually can nick the wire and uh, you leave uh, a bit of exposed copper essentially that's not completely covered with uh, plastic so you've got to be really careful when you're using one of these. Most of the time I tend to prefer just using side cutters and uh, I just cut down into the cable, especially if I'm using mains um, and then, you know, along, just to, just to reduce the chance of uh, nicking the cable. Um, it sort of ends up, you know, slightly messier uh, end to it, but uh, I find it's a little bit safer. Uh, but I'll definitely be using these to open boxes. This is absolutely fantastic. Uh, thanks very much, Henrik. Looking forward to using them. Oh, in fact, I can use them, can't I? Let's uh, clean up this mess and open up the next package. So the uh, next one is, um, of course, a JLC PCB uh, package. You gotta love these knives. So this is uh, the next revision of the Micro UPS, which uh, is going to be forming the basis of a new series of boards called uh, Works, W-Y-R-K-S. Um, I should really have renamed it on this uh, version to be uh, Works UPS, but I think I just forgot to relabel it. So this is actually an identical design to the uh, Micro UPS, uh, which is uh, this board. If you watched my previous mailbag, uh, you would have seen me unbox this. So this micro UPS design I'm still going to be producing and making. It's designed to fit within an 18650 battery. The intent is to make it as small as possible. But the design is essentially the same uh, with the uh, next version of the micro UPS or <laughs> works UPS. You can see the SMD components are pretty much the same position. The intent with that is to make the stencil as identical as possible. So when it comes to pick and placing, I'll be able to just run uh, one stack of components and produce several boards, uh, which should be good. So uh, the differences between the previous micro UPS is obviously it's got a pie header, but one thing that I wanted to be able to do is actually enable stacking. So you'll either be able to solder up a standard header or a uh, pass through header, uh, which I actually don't have one of them on hand at the moment. It'll allow you to actually stack them up like this and if you get a header that's long enough 
uh, you'll be able to pass through and actually daisy chain a whole of boards. So that's the intent with this one. You can either use an 18650 socket or it's also got a position for a standard LiPo battery connector. It has a micro USB connector and also a header for power in and also a header for power out and also that 5 volts going to the Raspberry Pi header. So it's got a LiPo battery charger and DC buck converter. That's all controlled by an AT Tiny. And there's also the logic level converters needed to be able to step down from the 5 volts on the AT Tiny down to 3.3 uh, volts on the Raspberry Pi. So it's also got status LEDs uh, for power and charge um, and a header which can either be used as uh, either simple on off or either soft on, soft off. So similar to a PC, you press a button and it turns on, uh, press it again, it turns off or goes to standby. It's all controlled by ITC. Uh, and the AT Tiny has complete control over both the DC buck converter and the LiPo charging. So the AT Tiny will actually run off battery. So the goal with this, uh, this board and also the micro UPS is to make an ultra low power board. My aim is to get it down to tens of microamps. Oh, it's also got a real time clock on it too. That's one thing I didn't mention. Uh, real time clock as well. So you can power on the Raspberry Pi, whatever board you have, power it on at a certain time, power it off and be able to control it that way. So theoretically, I should be able to get it down to tens of microamps, which would be really nice. So I'll still make and sell both of these boards on Tindy, but it serves a different purpose, the micro UPS. So the Works UPS will provide the power for all the uh, Works based PCBs that you can stack on top of each other. So that's really good. So the next one. So this is the second board in the Works PCB series. I've called it the Works Pi IO. It's essentially a logic level converter board. Uh, provides logic level converters to five volts for uh, 26 of the GPIOs, so pretty much all of them. This head is actually aligned to the screw holes, so you can potentially add an incompatible Pi hat that can only run a five volts to this header. Once again, it's a pass-through header that allows you to stack all these boards up. It's got GPIO labels on the top side so you'll be able to know which one you're connecting to but I think I might actually have to make that a little bigger because that's a little bit too small. Uh, it's got two LEDs which are attached to the TX and RX on the UART so you can either have them this way or that way. The LEDs that I had in mind they can be visible from both sides so now if you saw the video on my Wi-Fi counter project I had an issue with the original design of the Pi strip which it didn't support all the WS2812 LED strips so I needed to add a buffer uh, now in that video I made a bit of a guff I said it was a 74HCT245 but what I really was using was the 74HCT4053 which is a three channel analog switch so I added that to this PCB, which ended up being cheaper than the uh, 245. And also in terms of space, I could actually fit it in as well. As you would have seen in that video, the BSS138 can't really cope with high speed signals too well. So that's the reason for that analog switch. And it will drive WS2812 LED strips, either from the PCM, PWM or SPI signals from the Raspberry Pi. And this will actually replace the Pi strip and the reason for that is it ends up being cheaper if someone just wants to be able to drive a WS2812 LED strip and also they get the logic level converters in as well. That's the uh, Works Pi IO. I'm actually going to be coming out with another version of this called the Works Pi IO2 which doesn't use BSS 138s. Uh, it uses a different buffer which is capable of hitting 100 megahertz. So that would be really nice. Unfortunately, it's a little bit more expensive um, so I'll still make both, but depending on your needs, you might uh, need 100 megahertz signals. So uh, that's another PCB that I'll be making and uh, putting up on Tindy very shortly. So a couple of people have asked me, uh, what's happening with the Pi Projector project? Uh, I've been doing a lot of things in the background. I still plan on selling the plain adapter boards on Tindy, uh, which is these ones. 
this is a cheaper version and all it provides is a simple adapter from the BeagleBone connections coming from the DLP2000 to a Pi Zero W. Uh, but I had a couple of issues with the Rev2. Uh, this is the Rev2 uh, which contains the DC buck converter and LiPo charging. So first of all, even though the end result was very compact, it meant that you couldn't really get access to any of the USB ports and made it difficult to get to the SD card as well. You also had to solder on the uh, Raspberry Pi Zero W which sort of made it a little bit inaccessible and it was one use thing. So you, once you had it there you couldn't do anything else with it. So this is actually the Rev 2.3. Uh, where I actually moved the Raspberry Pi up to this end of the PCB. The intent with that is to allow the Raspberry Pi to sit underneath and gain access to the USB ports and also not have it be soldered in completely. But the problem with this design is that the Wi-Fi antenna is very close to the inductor on the DC buck converter and that actually caused a lot of problems. So I wasn't really happy with the power module and the location. The Pi actually needed to be in this spot to be able to be connected from underneath and gain access to all the, the uh, USB ports. So I went back and I redesigned the layout slightly by making the PCB slightly bigger than the DLP2000. I was able to add in some pass-through headers up the top here, similar to the uh, works boards I mentioned earlier. So this means that the PCB will now fit closer to the DLP2000 and it will actually come up snugly against uh, this, this PCB where the headers are stopping the PCB from connecting everything underneath. I've also flipped the Pi header so that the Pi can fit underneath uh, with once again pass through headers. This will actually end up being about the same size. That also means that the Pi won't be baked in, you'll be able to get access to the USB ports and there'll be less interference which will be good. I've actually gone with a micro USB connector instead of the DC jack as this turns out to be cheaper and I don't really need it for the power. You'll see that the power circuitry is identical to the micro UPS. Uh, in fact, you'll be able to use any of the works PCBs with the uh, Pi projector. I've also added in a header which will give me access to the extra six signals for the RGB 666 video format. The Pi Zero has only enough signals pushed out to enable RGB 444 video format. So I'll be making another couple of boards that can be used with the Pi projector, which provide bridges for HDMI and SPI. If you saw my Orange Pi RK3399 review video, I came across the excellent HDMI to MIPI CSI bridge. So I plan to use this IC as the basis of the HDMI converter. Um, which will be interesting to see how it goes. There's also a couple of SPI to RGB 666 converter ICs that I'm looking into um, to enable any Arduino or anything that has SPI to make use of the DLP2000. So once I have the uh, micro UPS design tested and working, I'll create some Pi projector prototypes, test those, and then on to uh, crowd supply. Can't wait for it. Anyway, so that's about it. I need to get back to uh, tidying my studio up because it's so messy. And uh, let's see if the official Wi-Fi counter can update the account. Thanks for watching. See you next week.